Hello, everybody. Welcome to physics. This is it. This is the last bit of this chapter before the big test. This might slow us down a little bit because there's friction involved. So I actually came up with some notes that I'm going to post online here that will help you um, tell you step by step what we do. Okay, so take this for example. We have a 30 degree ram. We've got a 30 newton and a 20 newton mass. And the coefficient of friction here is 0.23. Okay, so now if you think of what we've been talking about here lately, we, we know that there's a force of gravity always, right? And then we have the force down the ramp which is going to be the cosine theta, or I'm sorry, the sine theta of the mg, right? So sine, in this case, 30 mg. And then we have this force here of 20 newtons. And then we have friction. But here's the problem with friction. It can go either way. So remember, friction only opposes motion or potential motion. So before we put friction on there, we need to figure out which way this thing would go if there was no friction. Keeping in mind that it might not go anywhere if there is friction. So the first thing you want to do then is figure out who wins the tug of war without any friction. So the sine of 30 times 30 newtons is going to be 15, right? So we know now that there's 15 newtons of a pull in this direction, down the ramp. And we have a 20 newton pull in that direction. So who wins the tug of war? The 20 newton, right? So if there's acceleration, oh look, I guess I already put the arrow here. If there's acceleration, it's got to be to the right. Do you agree with that? But now we have to figure out if there's going to be an acceleration. So the first thing you do, well, and you could put, you could call this now at this point T1 and this T2. You can start your little formulas here. Let me make myself a little bit more room. Let's say that T1 equals T2. Oops. So T1 is 15 for sure, right? So we know it's 15, and then it could be, it could be having friction on it. Well, in, in fact, if it's going to move this way, we can already say, here, I'll put T2 as 20 here. We, we know that friction is going to be in this direction. Do you agree? Because it's going to oppose that motion, that acceleration up the ramp. So friction's got to be in the opposite direction. Now, here's the deal. Remember, friction can be less than or equal to the coefficient times the normal. Okay, so in this case, if it was equal to, the coefficient here is 0.23, right? So I'm going to put that in, 0.23. And then the normal is cosine 30 times 30. Okay, so friction at max could be then 5.98 newtons. So now let's take a good look at this, okay, because 5.98 newtons, so if we were to put that over here, plus 5.98, because it would cause there to be more of a tug, right, on tension. What happens there now? We see that if friction maxes out, this is 20.98, which would mean that friction would cause this thing to actually accelerate the opposite way. Can that happen? 
That cannot happen if v sub naught equals zero. Now, if it's already, if someone like gave it a shove, then it could happen and it could start slowing down. But all of our cases are starting at v sub naught with zero. So, what does that mean about friction? Does it max out? No, it doesn't max out, does it? It can't. The, so, what friction then ends up being in this case, so now this becomes a problem where we say there's no acceleration and friction equals 5 newtons because that is all that friction needs to be in order to keep this thing from moving. And friction will never max out if it doesn't have to. That's the whole idea of this less than or equal to formula. Are there any questions? So the question was, why would you add friction to 15? Isn't it always opposing motion? Well, if you look back at where we started, we first determined that this pole was bigger than this pole, just from the, the weight components. Do you agree? And then after that, we, we determined that if there's acceleration, it's going to be up the ramp. And at that point is when we were able to say friction is going to be down the ramp. It has to be because it opposes motion, just like you said. And so that's why from the perspective of what we call T1, which really, remember T1 and T2 are the same thing, but we're really thinking about what's happening on these blocks. And Newton's third law says that this block here cannot pull harder than that block. It's impossible to have a force that's not being equal but opposite in direction on the other side. It's impossible. You can't push nothing. So, with that said, we decided, or we then needed to add the friction component to the left side. But then we noticed that, hey, that doesn't work because friction actually is bigger than the 20 newton pull from the other side, and friction would never accelerate something. So we had to back off that friction number to 5 newtons, which would then just equal T2, or equal the pull from the T2 side, and therefore it doesn't move at all. Okay, so everything we just talked about there is in the notes. Um, let me erase this here real quickly so you can see. Okay, so everything that we just went through are in the notes. Determine which way possible acceleration, then pencil acceleration in on the picture. Step two, determine if friction is enough to keep for movement. So this, we did all these steps together, but they are printed out for you. They will be on the Moodle site. Um, and then we came up with, oh, I guess you never did solve for tension. But in the end, the tension would have been 20 by using either the two formulas. Okay, so let's try one where hopefully this thing moves. Okay, so now, just by looking at this, can we see which way the acceleration is going to be? Well, I guess I penciled it in for you right here. But the reason why I said that is because sine 30 times 20 is 10 newtons. Do you agree? And that would be the force down the ramp. And then we have the 30 newton force here. Okay, I should probably draw that longer. Okay. So we know it's going to be going up the ramp. Okay. So now our friction is going to be in the opposite direction of movement. So I'll just put it in here so it's not so hard to read. I'll say friction. I'm going to say equal to just because I know that this thing's going to move this time. So the coefficient is 0.33, and the normal is the cosine of 30 times 20. So the friction then is going to be 5.72 newtons, 
And as we said, that's in this direction here. So we got friction plus the force down the ramp against the 30 newtons. Okay, so if you add those two forces together, you can see that this thing is going to be moving still, right? Okay, so now we can actually do our little tension formulas. And we'll say T1 is equal to T2. So there's the force down the ramp that causes tension in T1 plus the force of friction that causes more tension according to T1, right? It's going to make it harder to pull. And that's all going to equal... Uh, oh, well, wait, what else is happening over there? The force down the ramp plus the force of friction plus... There, you know, we're accelerating this thing upwards, so that means we have to tug on it and accelerate that mass. So I will say then, M2, time of acceleration of the system, because this is a two kilogram mass, do you agree? Okay, and then that's all gonna equal 30. What's gonna happen on this side because of acceleration of the system? It's accelerating downwards, so it's gonna be lighter, right? Like remember, when you put your book up in the air and you go with it, it makes it lighter. So that'll be a minus M3 acceleration of the system. Any questions about that master formula? Okay, so now we can start putting in some more numbers here. I'm just going to erase this so it doesn't get too confusing. But the force down the ramp here is 10 newtons. And the friction is, we already figured out, 5.72 plus, I'll put 2 AS, because the mass is 2 kilograms, equals 30 minus 3 AS. Okay. So then, you know, we put the Acceleration on the same side, I'll say 5 accelerations of the system is equal to 30 minus 15.72 or 14.28 newtons. Divide both sides by 5 and the acceleration of the system is 2.86 meters per second squared. Okay, and now we can put it into either of our two tension formulas. I guess I like this one a little bit better because it's one less step. So I'll just say T is equal to 30 minus 3 times 2.86. And that tension then equals... 21.4 newtons. And since T1 equals T2, we're done. Are there any questions I can answer? Okay, it looks like we've got all our questions answered. And just to let you know, I have all the steps as well for this. So you can look at it and see each step individually online. Okay, have a good day.